Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. In today's topic, I'd like to, to uh, discuss jump timing. Before I jump in and tell you what are the symptoms of jump timing, first let me break down this to you exactly what is part of the timing system. Basically, the timing system consists of the camshaft sprocket, crankshaft sprocket, a tensioner, maybe a water pump, an idler pulley, and either timing guide, and timing belt or timing chain. The most important part of the timing system is that all the timing must be aligned. For example, right here I have the timing mark in this upside down triangle, and they all must be in line together. For example, on the camshaft sprocket, you're gonna have a timing there, timing mark, time mark over here, and of course one here on the crankshaft sprocket. If one of the timing is off, this can really cause catastrophic damage to your engine. So basically when you have the timing system, on the bottom end you're gonna have the crankshaft, you're gonna top part end, you're gonna have the valve train. Basically the timing belt or the timing chain is gonna synchronize the top end and the bottom end of the engine to work together. So there are a lot of factors that can cause time to jump. And maybe one of the most common ones is going to be a weak tensioner. Basically, the tensioner constantly apply tension against the belt or the timing chain. And when the tensioner is weak, normally it's either spring-loaded or hydraulic, it will cause the, um, the belt and the chain to jump under load. The second common cause is either going to be a stretch timing chain or a worn timing belt. Basically, if it's stretched or completely worn, it cannot really retain that shape that it's supposed to be and eventually it's going to be kind of loose and create a lot of slack and eventually it's going to jump especially again under load. Another common cause is going to be either a water pump that is failing and the bearing is giving out and basically it starts to wobble around and it's going to cause the, uh, the belt or the chain to come out of place or the idler uh, pulley can be worn and again you know it can create a lot of, of movements as well and cause the, uh, the belt or chain to again come out of place and again you could also have a weak tensioner pulley that can also behave the same way as all these pulleys. So basically the first common sign that you're going to notice that timing is jumped most likely is going to be low power. This is due to one or two multiple tooth that has jumped and basically what this is going to do is going to cause the, um, the intake and exhaust valve to open at different times and when that happened, that it may, may not come close completely and cause low compression. And the second most common cause when the timing jumped a few teeth, you may notice that the engine may not start at all. Basically, the, uh, if the timing jumps, the timing can be extremely off and it can cause the, um, the in intake or exhaust valve to impact against the piston head and cause it to break. And one thing you're gonna notice that your engine may not start and you may hear some sort of no noise, especially during startup. Basically, the, the, the valve can be broken off and you, it might start to rattle in there in the, uh, the cylinder. The next common cause that you're gonna notice is that you may have an engine misfire. Basically, this may trigger, trigger a P0300 code to about P0 uh, 10. It really depends how many cylinders you have. So basically when you have low compression, this is going to cause an engine misfire and you're going to have multiple codes that can show up in a scan too, as well as the check engine light turning on and flashing. So the next common cause is going to be engine backfire. So basically when your timing is off, it can cause late spark and cause unburnt fuel to enter the exhaust system and spontaneously uh, combust. The next common symptom you may notice is that you may have multiple um, camshaft or crankshaft codes. So basically the camshaft and the crankshaft sensor monitor the rotational speed of the camshaft and the crankshaft. And basically when the speed is off and timing is off, this can trigger the camshaft and crankshaft code. So even if you replace the sensor, it's not going to fix the problem. Maybe you just should uh, suspect that the, uh, the timing is off. The quickest way to check if your timing is off is first you want to set piston number one to top dead center. So basically you want to make sure that the crankshaft sprocket at the timing mark is all the way at the highest point. 
against the mark. The mark does not always, the mark is not always at 12 o'clock. It can sometimes be at one o'clock. Sometimes it can be 11 o'clock. So you gotta make sure. So once you have this one at top dead center and you have the timing mark over here, next you want to remove the uh, timing cover and you want to inspect the timing mark on the camshaft sprocket. And for example, if you see that this one is at 12 o'clock and is in aligned with the, uh, the mark and for, for some reason you see this one is off, let's just say it's over there, then you know your timing is off. So basically what you have to do is keep this mark over here and here aligned and you want to move this sprocket, you want to back it up and you want to make sure that everything is in place. Once you complete that, next thing you want to do is conduct a compression test and make sure that you have all good reading in all your cylinders. I hope you find this video useful and educational. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Top 5 Water Repairs. And I hope you're looking forward to my next video.